Let's relax with a ghost pipe tincture. Rebel Canners teaching all kinds of food preservation, especially the old ways. We all can use a little bit more of the old ways these days. Hey, be sure you're subscribed because sometimes YouTube does some funny things with that. And be sure to hit the like button on your way out. Thanks. So here I have my ghost pipe tincture. You're going to see it's very dark compared to when I first put the ghost pipe in there. There's still some there, a little white. But for the most part, it has turned very dark. This tincture has been 10 years in the making. Um, I first found Ghost Pipe 10 years ago on a friend's property, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere since then. And it just so happened the other day, he owed me a favor. Um, he wanted some advice, and I'm like, I will give you this advice, but... I want some ghost pipe from your property. He's like, is it even out there? And I'm like, well, let's go look. And he goes, it's dark. I said, perfect, let's go look. So I actually harvest this by flashlight. <laughs> but I got my ghost pipe finally from there. And that's the only place around I can find it. It's very rare. But when you do find it, it seems to be very prolific in the areas it grows. But harvest responsibly, please. So here's my ghost pipe. I can hardly wait until I can uh, strain it, but I made quite a bit. I can see I'm about a little bit over a pipe. Um, when I first found Ghost Pipe and I had read about it, I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. What is this plant? And then it's like, it's for good for toothache. And I happened to have a toothache at that point, And it said it was edible. So I actually chewed on it and it really did help my, my toothache a lot. Native Americans used it for toothaches. And not only did it help my toothache, it kind of tastes a little bit like asparagus. I mean, obviously you don't want to eat this plant in quantity. No, 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 no. In fact, you only want to take the tincture in very limited amounts. Um, the maximum dose is 30 drops. So you do not want to, you know, overindulge in it. Um, but it does have pain relieving qualities. It has muscle relaxant qualities um, and it helps with insomnia. So I am very excited to have this tincture in my home apothecary and I wanted to show you this plant. It's awesome. It's something you could forage if you happen to find it. Um, but again, do it very responsible. And you certainly don't need it in this quantity. Um, I'm going to give some of this back to my friend in exchange for having harvested it on this property but um it is just amazing and i want to share this with you so here's my video about ghost pipe and we'll talk about it a little bit more with some pictures so ghost pipe can be found in woodland areas it's often associated with beech trees ghost pipe grows in clumps it can be white pink or even reddish it is said that ghost pipe blooms just one week every year, but that has not been my experience. Ghost pipe is very important for pollinators, especially the bumblebee. Um, the color of ghost pipe is because it does not contain any of its own chlorophyll or produce its own food. It feeds off other plants. Ghost pipe is found throughout the United States from north to south and east to west all across the United States. If you take a close look at the flower, you'll realize that it is in the same family as the blueberry. This video is not intended for medical advice. It is just intended um, to show you one of the plants you may be able to forage and use responsibly. Do your own research. 
Once I got my ghost pipe home, I cut it into thirds and put it in the jar and covered it with good quality vodka. You want something that's 80 to 100 proof or better. This is going to sit for eight weeks until I can strain it. And as with any plant, do your own research. Um, be very careful in testing it before you uh, take it. You know, try a small amount before you take a large amount of anything. Um, and again, research it, research it, research it yourself. Don't take my word for anything. Do your own research before you ingest any plant. And be sure before you forage, you know what you're foraging for. Never ever take everything from a spot, forage responsibly. So, and this is my ghost pipe, and I'm very excited. I've waited a really long time to make a tincture. Ever since I got it, harvested it the first time at my friends. We were camping. Um, we used to go out there and camp every weekend. Every weekend, there was a couple families my kids love going out and camping with their families and their kids. And so we used to do that. And then I learned about ghost pipe and then we didn't go back camping for whatever reason. And so I was very excited when my friend called and needed something. I'm like, yes, we will go. But I want to get some ghost pipe from your woods. And they're like, is it even there? And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember it. It's probably still there. I was so lucky it was still there. And we're out there by flashlight in the woods. They're like, can, can you get this? You know, will you be able to find it? Oh, I'm like, oh, this is the perfect plant to harvest by flashlight. Because it's white. You, it just pops right up when you finally see it. So, no, that has no chlorophyll. Very interesting. One of the few plants. And it's in the blueberry family. Oh, some fun facts that I shared with you about it. But I just think it's really cool. And so I was able to go out with a flashlight and harvest uh, enough for this year's tincture. And it will be exciting to be able to use it. I uh, really want to build up my home apothecary. And I really want to share this foraging series with you. But I have to have, you know, a chance to get out there and get these items. So I was just excited to be able to share this with you. And like, I've wanted to make this tincture for at least 10 years now. So I'm very excited. And I hope you enjoy this series. I'll put a link to the series up here. I am doing a foraging series and I'm doing an apothecary series. So there should be a couple eye cards up here, depending on which, whether you're into the wild edibles or if you're into the medicinal wild edibles, which one you want to do. But hopefully as I go through this series and flesh it out, I'll have not only how to harvest them and forage for them, but how to use them. So watch for a lot more videos coming in the series. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed doing it. It's one of my passions right along with canning and food preservation. And I just want to teach you the old ways so that you can be self-sufficient. So thank you and have a great day, everyone. If you like my content, be sure to subscribe. I am so close to 10,000 subscribers and I have some wonderful things planned for that.